Hey everyone, Brandon and Kyle back again at the Kabuki Strength Studio today, and today we're going to be talking about one of our favorite squat, deadlift, and overall movement prep drills, and that is the bear to hinge drill. We thought this would be a great drill for us to film today because it's one that's a bit more challenging, and it's oftentimes one that not a lot of lifters are going to do great prior to training because they're usually rushing it. So while most of you guys are probably not training right now and you're stuck at home, this is a great time to improve these more complex drills and we'll show you exactly what we mean as we do it. We're going to start Kyle off in the actual bear position. Now this is really going to set the entire foundation for the drill. Go ahead and go knees on the ground for a second here Kyle. It's very very important that we maintain a very stiff and, and strong brace during the entire movement. This drill becomes really really easy if you let yourself round your spine going into the actual hinge portion of it. So it's super important that we set Kyle up with a very, very strong brace. It's also going to be incredibly important that Kyle uses his hands fully through the ground. We want Kyle pressing through the ground in the early stages of this drill very, very hard and intentfully. As Kyle presses through his hands, it's going to set a nice foundation for his shoulders to function properly. If he doesn't press hard with his hands, he's likely to, um, to uh, hang out in some passive retraction with his scapulas and overall uh, be in not a great position at the shoulder girdle. There's some things we'll talk about at the feet, but we'll save that for, uh, for when they're important. So first things first, set Kyle up with a brace. Good. Don't, don't round here, Kyle. There. Brace hard. Good. Maintain that. Knees off ground slightly. Now this is a starting position, and we would take it that intently to get into position. From here, Kyle's slowly going to walk back into as deep of hip flexion as possible. We're going to ask Kyle to pause right here. As he's going back, very, very important in this position that he is not rounding here. If he rounds this position at all, this drill becomes incredibly easy. And we're really going to take a lot of the benefits of trunk stability out of the drill if you let yourself round into flexion. Okay, go ahead, Kyle. Continue walking slowly, slowly, stop, go higher hips here higher hip position. Now, as Kyle's starting to shift into that further hinged position, I want him minimally relying on his hands. That means he's only going to be pressing through his fingers as he gets back onto his feet. And we're starting to see a little bit of rounding from Kyle. It's really just because we're forcing him to brace this long and he's starting to lose it. Normally, this drill would take probably five to 10 seconds, not a couple minutes as we're doing it here. Higher hips here, Kyle, slowly walk back. We really want Kyle to support his entire torso with his bracing. Extend here, extend. This is the correction that we were talking about, guys. Extend this section, Kyle, here, good. Extend, good, continue walking back. High hips, extend, no hands, extend. Don't round, don't round, don't round, don't round, don't round. And squat, good. That's a tough drill. It's tough because we made Kyle do it for a bit longer, but going stand back up, Kyle, let's go back through the reverse of it. So just as Kyle finished it at the top, we're going to start it from the top and get back down from this. So it's a two part drill. Kyle loves me for doing this now. Go ahead and squat and get back into it here, Kyle. Kyle's going to pitch forward really still bracing hard, keeping an extended spine here or a neutral spine at least. We don't want him arching. I'm cueing him to arch because he's over flexing, okay? But we need this neutral and he's slowly going to walk out. Notice he's on fingertips because he should be supporting his torso with his bracing only and minimally with the hands until the start position. So again, guys, this is a fantastic drill for overall trunk stability. You can notice how hard Kyle was working. And when we did force him to hold the drill longer, he started to fault a little bit. That's simply because we made him do it for a long time in the most challenging section of the drill. Really, really great drill to pattern your <coughs> hip flexion in a squat pattern if you struggle with that. And it's one of our probably most favorite drills that covers many, many different things. Uh, from the foot, uh, we mentioned we were gonna talk about that a little bit. The most important thing is that we're not collapsing. We want the ankles to remain in line with the knees the entire time and we don't want uh, the individual either riding an excessive hip external rotation or sometimes even hip internal rotation which is uh, less common. So think ankles directly below knees and a very strong forefoot through the entire drill. Uh, anything you'd like to add there Coach Kyle? Uh, just for at home workouts one of the things that is very nice about this drill we're looking at shoulder T-spine mobility, um, actual 
uh, core strength and stability through the entire spine, as well as hip stability. So one of our favorite drills that we use frequently, again, like Brandon said, pre-squat patterning, but this can really help take care of all those areas. And if done slow at a tempo like that can be pretty challenging as you saw. Yeah, do not rush this drill, guys. It should take you at least 10 seconds to get fully back into the squat position and then back into the uh, bear position. All right, Brandon and Kyle out.